Okay, this is for my digital fabrication students. I just wanted to show how we can create a uh, hinge. And we first found that uh, we could just find a hinge in the McMaster car catalog, click on product detail, and if we scroll down after we see the, the image and the information about the hinge, we can scroll down to uh, the different files that are available. So if we choose 3D step, and hit save, we'll see that it brings in the hinge from McMaster car. This is the one that we're going to create from scratch. So we could, you know, like there's no, there's no actual way if we, um, if we wanted to drag any individual one of these around, we couldn't really uh, make it act like a hinge because we need components for that and we need um, joints. So I will uh, create components because we need components to make uh, an assembly of joints but um, it's not ideal you can see they're different colors because I have uh, component color cycling turned on so it shows me that there are three different components they each have their own color here in the browser uh, I could now make an as-built joint between them uh, I'll capture the position so they stay where they are and if I make a revolute joint well this component should revolve around this uh, pin and I can just select a position which would be somewhere on the top so you can see we could start to make it work like a hinge and um, I can drive this joint <clears throat> and see it function but um, that's you know it's not ideal that we have to create these components afterward I mean, that's what we'd have to do if we were inserting it from McMaster car but I'm interested in uh, just the exercise of making this from scratch so we're gonna make that same one from scratch uh, the way I'll start is actually to go back to the McMaster car catalog and um, let's see. I'll search for that exact um, hinge. That's the part number. And I'll choose product detail. And then instead of uh, selecting a 3D model, I'll select a 2D drawing. So there's the 2D PDF and I'll save it. Uh, it's now I'll save it here into my onto my hard drive, and then I'll open this with um, with preview. So here it is, and uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'd like to just bring this drawing in as a canvas, and that'll help me start um, drawing. the 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 actual drawing and the dimensions here leave a little bit to be desired. It's not totally designed for us to fabricate a hinge like this ourselves. It's really just to tell you where the holes are and how big it is so that you could use it in a, um, a machine or a part or a project or whatever uh, of your own. So it doesn't have every piece of information we need, but we'll fudge some of it. So what I'll do is hold down Command, Shift, and 4 uh, on the Mac. That means uh, screen capture. It allows me to select the part of the screen I want to capture. I'll do the same thing, Command, Shift, 4, and I'll grab this part. Now I'll go back to uh, Fusion 360 and I'll attach a canvas. I'll attach it to the top uh, work plane and I'll select that image that I just made. And I'll leave the opacity down a bit so I can see through it, hit display through. Those are usually good settings. I'll hit OK and we can see it's here. Uh, my document settings are at inches, which is what I want since the drawing is in inches. And, um, but I don't know if this is actually the real size. So I'll go here to the canvas, right click and hit calibrate. And then I'll just look at it from the top and kind of zoom in and uh, just say the distance from here to here should be one and a half inches. I'll hit F6 to bring everything back into the screen. And, um, and that's it, it's calibrated now. So, um, you know, it doesn't have to be super precise. And in fact, because I have a low resolution right now for this uh, video, this screencast, that it's really kind of hard to see where that point is. Um, it doesn't really look that good, but that's okay. And we're really just using this as a basis to start sketching. Before we start sketching, we should create components. So this is different than in the earlier one where we had to make components after we had some bodies. This time, we're going to do it right, which is to create a component before we start modeling anything. So I'm going to create a component and I'll call it uh, hinge side. And you can see everything else got grayed out, including the canvas, which is part of the root component. So uh, I will create a sketch on this plane. 
and I'll just use the line tool to start kind of drawing this out. So I'll draw basically kind of something that looks like what's underneath. I'll click here and hold down the button with the line tool that allows you to make a an arc. And I've got a screwed up line here, but that's okay. I can highlight these two and then say those should be parallel. Okay, so it's looking pretty close. I can just drag this in and that looks about right. Uh, this one is tangent. I don't think this one is because I don't see a little tangent symbol near it. So I'll highlight those two and choose the tangent constraint. So um, these dimensions are not here in the uh, drawing from McMaster, but if I click on it and hit D, it's pretty close to 0.375, which would be 3 eighths of an inch. I'll assume since it has mostly imperial measurements that they tried to make it a consistent size or something that we'd recognize. So I'll assume it's 375 and, and that looks like maybe that's about right. It happens sometimes. There we go. Strange things start happening when you have a low resolution screen. 0.375. Okay, so it doesn't look. It doesn't really look off. That seems like maybe uh, that was the right dimension. And um, and also, I think probably this is even uh, 0.375. So it looks pretty close. Uh, I could say that these two edges should be collinear and um, these two also should be collinear okay so it looks pretty good uh, I'll also add a couple of points for uh, this hole and this hole I don't know where they're located exactly but I do know that they're supposed to be 13 16 apart so I'll click here for the dimension sorry I'm doing this pretty quick but I hit D for dimension and uh, there there they are 13 sixteenths apart. You can drag them a little bit so they look closer to the drawing. And they're, you know, they're off from each other. So I can click the two of those and say they're supposed to be vertical from each other. So it's looking a little better. So um, this looks pretty good. I'll hit stop sketch. And uh, what I'll do is highlight and uh, hit E for extrude or click here on the extrude icon and drag downward, dragging downward because I want to use these points later to make holes and that'll make it easier if the sketch is right on top of the surface. So I'm going down uh, and the drawing says that it's 0 0.062 inches thick. Oh, but see, it's going up now. So I guess really it should be minus. That way it'll go down. I'll hit OK. And, uh, you know, I'll leave the holes for later. You can see, actually, I'll do the holes now. Um, but you can see that once I extrude, it kind of uh, disables the sketch. I have to turn it back on if I want to use it again. That's also a preference now that you can change so it doesn't do that automatically. I'll go to Create Hole and click on these two dots. You can see it's complaining that there's nothing to drill, and that's because the arrow's facing up. So I'll click Flip Direction, and now it's going down. Now the question is, what size are the holes? Well, if we look on the drawing from McMaster, it says the hinge uses number eight flathead screws. That doesn't help too much. I think later in Fusion 360, it'll start showing us uh, drill sizes and screw sizes, but now it's just decimal numbers. So first thing is, uh, what diameter is a number eight screw? And Google says it's 0.16 inches. That's not necessarily the size of the hole we want to make, so um, let's uh, look at a, a size chart. Okay, so I'm not even sure this will give us all the information. What we're really looking for is uh, we want to know what size hole to make. So here we go. Uh, is I going to have everything? There we go. That looks good. So a number eight screw, 0.164 inches in diameter, and this says if we want a close fit, the hole should be 0.1695, and if we want a free fit, which is probably better for this, 0.177. So let's make a hole that's 0.177 in diameter, and uh, depth is all. Let's try selecting them again. 
this one and this one. Okay, it's being a little fussy there, but uh, <clears throat> the other thing is we want it to be countersunk. So I can choose countersink here. So it adds that um, countersink. How big that should be, I'm not exactly sure. The countersink angle we'll assume is 82 degrees. That's if I look up the screws, that's usually where they are. Um, but looking at the actual uh, size of the countersink, I'm not really sure what we would use, but I'll just fudge it for now and hit OK. So there we go. And uh, let's see, did it actually... Point one point oh nine six one radius. The uh, diameter there would be, well, let's use inspect. Diameter is 0 0.1922, which I think is what we came up with, right? Point 0.1, well, no, it was 0.177. So what's happened is by doing that countersink, I, I enlarged the hole in the middle. So I guess I shouldn't, I probably shouldn't really fudge it, but um, I don't know. I don't feel like looking up this little bit of information. So uh, let's just add some number here that seems like it will do the job but won't enlarge the hole. Let's go with that. Okay, so we've got um, holes. We've got the one half of the hinge, but it's missing, of course, the, the loop part that holds the pin. So for that, I'm going to create a new sketch. Again, we're still in the hinge side component, so this sketch will be in the same component. I'll just click on this work plane right here. Or, you know what, I'll click on this plane. So that's where I'm going to make the sketch. And um, what I need is, uh, well, you know, <clears throat> let's look back for a second. In fact, I'm going to undo. I'm going to do Command-Z until I get rid of the sketch down there. So what I really want is if we look at the uh, drawing of the uh, hinge, I think I want this uh, edge to go halfway, and that's where the, the loop starts. I think maybe that'll make more sense in a moment, but uh, I'll edit that original sketch and I'll make a line that goes down here and down here. That's the center of that um, edge that comes that that part that comes out. And um, I'll make sure the sketch is turned on. I'll create a sketch on this plane. Oop, hold on. Undo, undo. Create a sketch on this side plane. And um, what I'd like to do is I want to get that uh, line that I just made into this sketch. So I can go to Sketch, Project, and just bring that line in, or at least the dot at the end, the point at the end. I'll hit OK. And now my sketch has a place for me to make my circle. So I'll do a two-point circle. I'll start it here. And what is the size of the circle? 5 sixteenths of an inch, according to the drawing as the outside and then the inside I'll swipe up with the right mouse to do another circle or actually I think a center circle is better now center diameter circle start from the center of this one and the size of the inner circle is we don't really know but we know the size of the pin is 316 so let's just make it the same size like I said this doesn't have all the information we need so um, we can stop and uh, <clears throat> what we need now is to extrude this out uh, across this this uh, little tab here. So I'll hit extrude and I'll start it and I'll just click on this edge so that it goes to the right length. That looks good. I'll hit OK. Um, oh, I think it made a new body. So let me go back and uh, what I'd like to do is actually join this. So I'll join that, and then I'll do the same. I'll uh, turn that sketch back on, and I'll extrude it again. This is a nice trick. I can hit extrude. I can click here, but I don't want to extrude from there. So instead of starting from the profile plane, which is the blue profile there, I'm going to start from object, and I can start from right here. And then uh, what is the distance? Well, again, I'll start moving it so it knows I'm ready to choose an edge. And no, <laughs> it's a little flaky. Let's try again. This profile and this object. Hmm. Oh, okay. It's going the wrong way. That's all right. And then the distance will be 
to there. Well, you know, this should work, but this is a little buggy. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just drag it over. Maybe it needs a different angle or something. <laughs> it's fighting me. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense at all. Let's try one more time. So I'm trying to use this profile and I want, well, one thing I could do is just use an offset plane uh, and choose that plane. <laughs> Let's try all over again. So I want this profile and I want it to go in this direction. We know how far. So it's got the distance, and then instead of profile plane, let's choose uh, from object, choose that, and then hit OK. OK, so maybe that's the sequence that it likes. OK, so um, the only trick is that this really shouldn't go extend any further than that. It really should have stopped right here. And, um, oh, you know, actually, OK, it's also, these are supposed to be down, I guess, at the bottom of this. So that's not a big deal. Let's fix it. Let's fix things up. So first of all, uh, this is the extrude. So we don't want to include these. So that fixed that problem. And then these were supposed to be down a bit. So let's try uh, editing this sketch. And instead of connecting there, we can make this, um, I can delete this constraint and that'll allow me to move it down. And I can say this should be vertical. Those points should be vertical from each other, and this should be tangent to this. So I'll hit stop, and now I've got exactly what I need. I'll turn off the sketches, and that looks like what it should be like. Although this second one, the second time I extruded, obviously it didn't, it made a new body instead of joining. I'll double click on that one, and I'll say not, that shouldn't be a new body, it should be a join. So, okay. So I've got a complete uh, hinge side and what I do next is this is the part that is really nice I can just um, make a copy of this I think the best thing to do is just copy and then right click on the main component and hit paste so um, you can see it's actually the same component there's a colon one and a colon two so they're linked to each other the, the way that I did it I could have also hit paste new and then it would be a totally different component but what this means is if I make a change to one it'll change both of them so uh, I'll show you that in a second so really all that needs to happen here is that this needs to turn around 180 degrees and it needs to move this direction uh, of course I'm not really sure how far so I'll just move it out here I will hit OK and um, now if I activate the root component, I'll see they're there, but they're not together. They look like they should fit though. So maybe what I'll do is add a joint and that'll pull them together. So what I want is I'll do a, revolu a revolute joint from this end of that hole and that should line up with that end of that hole. There we go. So uh, I can double click on that joint and I can see how it moves. Looks like it works. Now 180 degrees and zero degrees should be the limits of it. So I can right click on that joint, hit escape and right click on that joint, edit joint limits and change the minimum and maximum to zero and 180. If I animate, that's what it looks like. I hit okay. So that's about it. I mean, the pin is pretty easy to do. Uh, I won't go through that. But um, the nice thing to know is that now that hinge side one and two are here, what I could do is, um, let's say, hmm, what kind of change do I want? Maybe I need a third hole in here. I could just uh, create a hole and I'll just drop it, you know, right here. Um, and what will happen, you can see it's happening on both sides. So because they're the same component in two different locations, there's number one and there's number two. Any changes I make on one side are made on the other side. So it probably would have made sense to make the holes after I got everything in position. So I do it once and it translates over. But, you know, it's just kind of logically maybe it makes sense to organize the timeline that way. That's about it. Uh, hide the canvases and we've got our hinge. Good luck.